Here, I'm gonna show you how to make a data monitor in Excel where we can monitor any value in any worksheet in one place. And if we need to investigate it, we can click right here and go to that value. And it's going to work for numbers, emails, text, whatever you need. Garden inventory, we have an issue right here we need to investigate, click to view, and we're on that worksheet. And we can go through it, do whatever we want to do here, and then go back to the data monitor. And the best part is how easy this is to manage. Let's say that we want to update what causes us to need to investigate something. We can click the plus icon up here. And let's say that we want to only look at garden inventory if this does not equal yes. We can go to compare and change that. And then close this guy. And it's that easy. How about adding a new value? Well, let's go ahead and expand both of these. Zoom out just a little bit. And then we can go to the end of the table. We can hit tab. And then first off, let's give it a nice simple name. Let's go for invoice total this time. Tab. And now we have a sheet, a cell, or a name. We can reference a cell using its worksheet and actual cell location. Or if it is a named cell, we can type the name in right here. So notice this is the gardening worksheet, cell B3. So if I click here, that's exactly where we go. But what I'm going to use here is the named cell invoice total. Then we can tab across. You'll see that value pull in right here. What do we want to do? Well, let's investigate it. If the invoice is above, how about 50,000? So we go here, greater than, and 50, one, two, three, tab. There you go. Then we could close this guy up, close this guy up, and we see we need to investigate. So let's click to view. And there we go, the cell has been selected and we're in the invoice. And this is something that everyone can set up and manage. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. So let's go to a blank worksheet and get started. Now, if you would like to automate your workbook a little bit more than we're going to do here, check out my full Excel VBA course on teachexcel.com. I'll put a link to it below this video. And it's really going to save you a ton of time because you'll be able to do things like this and so much more with a click of a single simple button. So make sure to check that out and it might even be on sale. Now uh, let us grab these column titles so we don't have to type everything out. And let's go Alt ESV Enter to paste only the values, one of the most important keyboard shortcuts. And so now this is our table. Now you can arrange the columns in whatever order you want. So let's say that you want the investigate guy to be over here on the left, you can put them on the left. It is completely up to you. Now what we want to do is to figure out how we want to be able to reference our cells. In this case, I've made it very versatile. We're going to have one column that's going to be the display name. Then we're going to have one column for sheet. If you want to reference it by sheet, so the tab name down here, one for the cell, and then one for if it's a named cell. Now what we have to do is put a formula in the value column so that we can get the value of whatever cell we describe right here. Then we have a comparison operator that's going to be input here. We could type it in by hand, but we're going to use a data validation drop down menu to make our life a little bit easier. Then we change the to value. So what do we want to compare this to and what comparison operator to use? Then we just get a true false value to figure out if we want to investigate it, add some conditional formatting. And over here, we put a really cool hyperlink formula that I showed you how to build last week. For our first example, let's start with how about sales total. And we're going to fill in every column here. Sales, and that should be F3. And for the name, let's go sales total. Remember the name of a cell. If you click the cell and look up here, that's where the name is, and that's how you can make the name. So just click a cell. Let's go down here and go up here and give it a name. I'm going to go another name, enter, and now that cell is another name, and that's how we can reference that cell. So we have two different ways to reference it here, and now let's build some code to a formula. I'm sorry, let's build a formula to get that value in here. And there's two formulas that we're going to combine. We're going to combine indirect, where we reference the name exactly like that. And if I hit enter, we're going to get the value. 
But then for these two, we need to make a regular cell reference. So if I go equals and go over here to F3, well, that's going to show you the name. So let's go one up. There we go. Then we can see sales F2. So we need to recreate that using the indirect function. So we go equals indirect and we can go C4 space ampersand space quote exclamation point ampersand and D4. Close that guy up, enter, and there we go. So we need both of these to be in one formula. And what you could do is use an if statement to check, hey, is this empty? If it's empty, go ahead and try using this. Or we could do something like check if this reference returns an error, and if it does, try this reference. And that's what we're going to do here. But let's make this formula a little bit better before we continue, because what happens if you add a space at the end? We get an error. So what we're going to do is to put trim around C4, and how about trim around D4? So we just remove any spaces, and the error is gone. But what about if we have a space in the worksheet name? So let's go ahead and add one more thing, a single quotation mark around the worksheet reference. So it's going to look a little bit more complex now. We want a single quote within the quotes, space ampersand space, and then put a single quote right there, enter. And now we have a more robust formula. And we're going to put it together with the if error. So first, let me select uh, this guy right here. And we'll go equals if error. And let's put that in there, take out the equals sign. So if the first reference is an error, then let's go with the second reference, which is easy. We don't need to copy it in direct E4. Close that up, close that up, and there's our formula. Now we can delete these two. And I'm going to select that and control X, control V. There we go. Now we need a comparison operator. Let's click this guy and hit Alt DL or we can go to uh, data and data validation. Then under allow, let's go to a list and let's make all the comparison operators. No quotation marks here. So less than comma greater than comma equals to comma greater than or equals to comma less than or equals to comma not equals to. So less than and greater than sign back to back. Now we have that perfect. To value, we're going to input that guy by hand. So let's say 50,000 and investigate. How do we check if this value is greater than this value or just to compare them? Well, we have a great little trick, the count if. So we're going to go count if this range, comma, and then we combine the comparison operator with the value. Close that up, hit enter, and we get a one. So if this is greater than that, we get a one. If it is not, we will get a zero. And we can just put a little and sign around that to make it return true or false. There's a lot of different ways to do this, but this way works pretty well. And the very last thing is to make the link for the view cell. Now I covered that in depth last week. I'll put a link to that tutorial below this video. But here what I'm going to do is just to type it out and tell you what's going on as we do it. So not as in depth of an explanation but we want the hyperlink function. And then I'm going to hit Alt Enter. And uh, let's first check if uh, this guy is blank. So we're going to do kind of the opposite check of what we did for the value function. Remember I said you could use either an if check or an if error. Well, here we're going to use the if. So let's say if this guy is empty, if it's blank, if there's nothing there, then let's go for the cell reference right here. And that's how we're going to make our hyperlink. If it is blank, comma, Alt, Enter. What do we want to do? Well, let's build our reference. We're going to do a quote, then a pound sign, then a single quote in case there are spaces in our sheet names. Close that up. And ampersand. Then let's go for the sheet. Space ampersand. Space quote. Single quote. Exclamation point. Close that up. And don't forget the cell reference. Ampersand. Cell reference. And we're good to go with that one. So how about a comma? then Alt Enter. Now let's say if we have a value here, how do we make that reference? Pound sign, click the cell, close it up, comma. Now we're in the hyperlink function, Alt Enter. 
And what do we want to display? How about click to view? Or if you wanted to make this dynamic, you could select the item name right here. And then instead of saying click to view, this would say sales total. But now we're done with the hyperlink, so let's close that up, enter, and let's test it out, sales total or F3, click to view, perfect. And that's really the hard part. The only two things we have to do now are to input the conditional formatting to make this work, to make it a table, and then if you want, you can hide the columns. So let's do that. For the conditional formatting, this cell already returns true or false. So all we have to do is to check if it's true or false. And we can go to the Home tab and make sure you have selected that cell, Conditional Formatting, New Rule, Use a Formula, click in here, click the Investigate cell, remove some dollar signs, Format, Fill, Red, OK, OK. And let's test it out, a less than, false, perfect. Now let's go in here and make it a table. Select everything and go to insert table or control T. Then my table has headers, yes, okay. And uh, let us add a new value and test it out. So we go to the end tab and let's go invoice total this time. And we've got a name for that. So invoice total, perfect. And let's get notified if it is greater than 50,000. Perfect. Investigate, true. All right, let's click the view. And there we go, cell selected, invoice worksheet. And the last thing that we wanna do is make it a little bit more useful. How about we highlight all of the cells where we're going to input something. Let's make it a nice little light gray. And we can do the same with these and maybe with item if you want as well. And let's go ahead and hide them. You could select them, right click and hide like that. And then if you want to unhide it, select around it and hit unhide. Or what we can do is we can go to a data and then over here, click group. And then we can hide it and show it using this guy right here. So it's nice and easy for everyone. And I had to stop myself from making this even more crazy as I was designing this tutorial because there's so much more that you could do. You could hide data in different ways. You could make these click to views dynamic. You could make the investigate cell dynamic. You could make the checks a lot more interesting so that you don't only check one value. You could check multiple values, say if it equals this or that or this, what do you wanna do? There's so much more interesting stuff that you can do with this data monitor worksheet. And I highly recommend that you download it and play around with it and make it work for you. And the last little trick I'm going to show you is how to check for an empty cell. So over here with the invoice email, we want to be alerted if an email was forgotten in the invoice. And to do that, you check if it equals zero. So let's make that real quick over here. Go to the end tab, invoice email and invoice email, we want equals zero, then that's a problem. Let's make this a little bit bigger and let us test this out. So we'll go to the invoice and let's go up here, delete that, go to sheet two, true. So it looks a little bit goofy to compare it to zero like that, but that means that it is empty. Then we can quickly click to view and make sure we input the email before we send it off which you can do using the click of a button if you watch my tutorial on sending invoices via email with the click of a button. It's a really cool little trick. It will turn this guy into a PDF, automatically attach it to an email and send it for you. There's really so much cool stuff that you can do in Excel. And you can do that particular trick using VBA and macros, which I show you how to do in my full Excel VBA and macro course on teachexcel.com which shows you how to automate your workbooks and save yourself hours of time, even if you've never seen a line of code before. I highly recommend you check out that course and other courses on teachexcel.com, and I'll put links to them below this video. But that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can get all of my new tutorials. That's it for this week. See you next time.